Okay, so this is um, part two in the series. It's going to be the remaining um, introduction and the beginning of what I call the Psalm 46 um, concept. I'm drinking coffee, sorry guys. Even you know, great rabbis need caffeine to get this through, get through this. So anyway, the so the concept is very clear. It's about you putting aside your um, your preconceived notions of what God wants and allow God to tell you, and more than just tell you, work through you. Um, which brings us to Psalm 46, and I'm, I wrote it down because I don't want to paraphrase it. I think it's very important. It's Psalm 46, verse 10. This is from the uh, NIV. It's easier to read. <clears throat> Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will exalt you among the nations. I will exalt you in the earth. The concept of meditation amongst, particularly amongst Christians, they see it in the Psalms and the Proverbs, meditate on my word daily, blah, blah, blah. They have no idea what that means. And the concepts that they have, they fear that they will bring in demons and uh, evil spirits into their self if they meditate. This is hogwash. And um, not that it's hogwash that people get demon possessed, they do. That's a different series. The hogwash part is, if you're approaching, if you're studying um, Satanism and uh, other forms of debauchery, you darn right you're going to be demon possessed. But if you're studying the, the Word of God, chances are, and I won't even say chances are, absolutely God will enter you. So, like I said, we're going to keep coming back to the Torah. The Torah for you to truly practice Kabbalism, the floor, the foundation of the house of God, which you are its structure, you are its temple, is based firmly on the Torah. Now, I'm going to give you some exegetical information. Well, this is definitely, you know, above basic knowledge about biblical studies especially Jewish studies, or Hebraic studies, I should say, which is this. Many, many books in the Bible, whether you're Christian, Jewish, or Muslim, we all believe that um, the Bible, in, our, in my case, it's the Tanakh, the Torah, the Psalms, the prophets, um, are all inspired by God. But the Torah itself is the words of God. When Yeshua uses the term, uh, you know, whenever the, or in John, for example, and we can go into that little concept of about the Gospel of John, when they're speaking of the word, medbar is a Hebrew for the utterance. It's the thing that breathed us into existence. Those words were given to Moses directly. That's why there's a big push for the Bible code and all this other stuff because they find out if you put it into a software program you people are getting these prophetic knowledges well that's part of that's a form of Kabbalism that is Kabbalah so we have to come back to the base you can't build a house from the roof down it has to come from the foundation so three things that you need to do before you really delve into a practice like this is to have at least a working knowledge of Hebrew. And when I say working knowledge, like an understanding of the vowels, the vowels, the understanding of the word, of the letters, what they stand for, and their alternate meanings. Take the time, go on eSword, is a very good resource. Buy a Humash, I will have it, of course, over here. Um, Humash has the English of the Torah, it has the Torah and the Haftorah, which is the um, prophetic writings, Isaiah and so forth. Um, and it has it in English, Hebrew, and in the bottom it, it explains both what, what the words mean 
and also like when you get to the parts where they're building the the temple it actually shows you diagrams of the temple which is very helpful and it'll give you a basic understanding once you start to study it um, you can start to see differential terms words meaning multiple things like Kabbalah for example and what the word Adam means Adam man mankind and so forth and we can go through this whole process ultimately to become a novice you should have you should start to practice the mitzvot the the commandments because just as yeshua said about the hand washing he wasn't it wasn't um going against people washing their hands we know that washing your hands is one of the best ways of preventing disease from transferring he was talking about the cup the vessel the word he used in greek can be translated back into hebrew as kabbalah as the vessel the vessel's dirty on the inside why wash the outside wash the inside first and then wash the outside another kabbalistic com uh, concept you have to clean here you know if a friend comes to visit your house you don't leave it disarrayed and dirty you, you clean it out and if that guest keeps coming you want to make sure that the house is clean, especially if it's an important guest. What more important a guest is the almighty creator of the universe. So getting into, I'm going to touch on this briefly, part of the practice besides obeying the, you know, preparing the body to accept the Ruach HaKodesh, one also needs to be silent and that's meditation. Many of us, and I'm speaking for myself, actually, um, go through our practice, our ritual, and I use that word in the most nicest way, not negative. It's not an empty motion to me. I actually think about what I'm doing. Study the portion, the Parsha, of the week, during the week, to prepare myself for Shabbat, and I sit in silence, and I listen to that small voice through all the other noise. And that is probably one of the hardest things a person can do. There are techniques in which you can um, ease yourself into it, start with five minutes and expand on it. Um, focus on your breath, just quieting down. Also, um, many of us, such as myself, and I shouldn't stop saying many of us, I do, is I do what the ancient rabbis did. Um, I eat vegetarian all through the week, and I find that that being vegetarian and not eating a big meal, uh, you can't really meditate. We find that you can't meditate um, on a full stomach. Uh, I eat vegetarian except for Shabbat and on high holy days, such as Passover and so forth. And when I do eat, I eat a minimal amount of meat. And I find that um, being a vegetarian during the week and primarily year round um, actually helps in my st my practice. My stomach and everything is not all twisted up, and I'm not thinking about my stomach hurting or you know this fullness I always have. And I'm much easier. It's much easier for me to meditate and focus. It also calms me down. Um, if any of you have anger issues, going to a vegetarian diet, I've found, uh, has calmed me down a great deal. I'm not saying that you have to go off and, you know, become a vegan or whatever, but by cutting out milk products and stuff, it's just good for your diet and your digestion. So, but meditation is the beginning of understanding um, how God is to enter you, has for you to receive God. His knowledge and everything, you have to start, and I'm going to big caveat here guys you have to study the Torah and obey it if you obey other things if what you're putting in your mouth and what is coming out of your mouth and coming into your mouth is not holy to God then you're not holy and that what's coming out of your practice is also going to be not holy holiness is achievable through outward as well as inward practice so that's it for my uh, be silent portion and then now we're going to go into 
um, other meditative aspects. Shalom.